Hello everyone, and welcome back to Hope Harbor Zoo. Hope you guys are all having the most wonderful of wonderful days. My name is Leaf, and it's so great to have you guys back over here as we get started on a lovely southern hairy-nosed wombat habitat. Try saying that five times fast. Anyways, the southern hairy-nosed wombat is one of the most common wombats that you can find in the United States. It is a very lovely creature. I was able to see these guys at Zoo Miami. Very incredible zoo that I highly recommend you guys go check out if you're in the area. Or even if you're not in the area. It's definitely a zoo that you should make a point to get to at some point. Because it's just so damn good. Regardless, this habitat is somewhat based off of that zoo. Not entirely, but just some various concepts like a little bit of elevation changes and stuff like that. Otherwise, this is pretty much all what I kind of came up with in my own silly little imagination. And getting started over here, I wanted to give this kind of area a little bit more of a unique look as to the rest of Islands of Color. So I really wanted to have this habitat stand out with custom flooring. Custom flooring is very much tedious. Um, you can see I kind of go a little bit crazy with it over here using the twilight wood pieces. Uh, very, very awesome wood pieces over here. Really awesome, unique coloration on them that just has a beautiful vibe to it all together. So I'm kind of using these as a way to kind of line up this area. And I create this nice elevated pathway that looks down into the Southern Hairy Nose Wombat exhibit. Eventually, I would like to get common wombats in ZSU as well. Um, I really just want to have a stellar Australian collection relatively soon. Uh, but eventually, I will need to kind of work with what I have um, set up for myself in Island of Color. Because we're kind of running out of space over here. Especially in terms of Australia. We really kind of, um, we kind of overextended what we wanted over here. But regardless, you can see I'm adding in the rest of the planks over here. And I'm trying to come up with some ideas on what to actually do about this molding itself. Uh, eventually, I'm kind of just like, okay, I'll fix it up later. And I do eventually fix it up off camera. Uh, but yeah, I wanted to get started on the habitat. So it is very much online with the um, rest of the Australia section that we have in Island of Color. Uh, it's these beautiful red rocks that I'm using, the NDP's Faux Rock Pack rocks. Uh, it has a very unique texture over here that looks very much like a mud wall, and it's just super awesome for that. Uh, a lot of the times, I have been known to use a lot more of those stalactite uh, walls that um, Caesar uses, that Wyatt uses, but recently, I've just been wanting to go back to the basics of these kinds of walls, so having a fun time with that, and then I also get started over here on just a little bit more of structural integrity. Uh, so I have these little concrete walls back over here, um, just adorned by a little bit of darker shades up on the bottom and on the top, and I kind of continue that all throughout there so that the wombats aren't going under the guests. Uh, because that would be a very easy way to freak these guys out. Now, they're not really shy animals. Uh, the wombats at Zoo Miami are relatively active um, when you actually are able to see them. However, uh, they do sleep a lot. So if you do go to Zoo Miami, uh, you might not be able to see them because they might be sleeping. That happened on my first time to that zoo. But luckily on my recent go-around... Uh, I was able to see them, so that was just super awesome. But they do not require too much habitat space as well, so that's very fun to work with. Uh, so, as you guys probably know, I like to build for my smaller animals. And the Southern Hairy Nose Wombat is indeed one of the smaller animals that you're really able to focus on the details of the habitat. Granted, you can focus on the details of a much larger habitat, but I just find it so much easier and so much more rewarding to do it for smaller animals as well. So I kind of get started on the rest of the foliage that surrounds the habitat. I really want this habitat to feel like it's very much centralized in the middle of a forest. Uh, Southern Hairy Nose Wombats live in anywhere between uh, desert scrublands to even temperate areas in Australia. Um, oftentimes you could probably find these guys running around or something in your backyard if you live in the right area. But um, no, I really just wanted it to feel a lot more, um, you know, a lot more densely foliaged 
and I think it plays off so well because it creates this nice little secluded area. It would also probably help with sound as well. It would also probably keep the sound down for the wombats, allow them to sleep a little bit better. And you know, that's really it. So I get started on this little bit of a faux mud bank. So I add a whole bunch of different techniques in here. I use a whole bunch of different faux rocks to begin with from NDP's pack, especially those giant trees. I really wanted that to be like a nice big addition right there, kind of like a nice big bump out. And then I get started on the actual faux rocks themselves, the ones that we got in the tried and true aquatic pack. And it just really tends to look super awesome to begin with. So I'm using that all over and it just creates this nice little rocky effect that I really do love in Island of Color. It's just such a nice vibe when all is said and done. And then, of course, I get started on my favorite part of Island of Color. These little fences. These fences are my favorite damn thing in the world because they look so good with the rainbow um, handles. I really want to use that in like some more zoos going forward because it really is such a beautiful, gorgeous effect. It really just helps to bring the guest in a lot more. And it really vib it vibrates. Oh no. Um, it really helps to make an area a lot more vibrant. And it pays off super well. Especially when you're working with a lot of, you know, very dark colors. Like a brown, orange, red, all that kind of stuff. Those very good highlights of green, of blue, of yellow. It really just helps to complement an area like this a lot more. And I just love it for that reason. So I add a whole bunch of that stuff in there. And yeah, it just looks pretty damn good to begin with. And I also add a few big um, center point trees. Uh, I know a lot of the times when you guys do watch my speed builds, you may hear me say I like to build my way up. Um, I'd like to start off with the smallest of small foliage to begin with, like the grasses, the buffalo grasses, the um, Yorkshire fog grass, all very awesome pieces. But oftentimes I sometimes like to... Uh, add focal points in the habitat and sometimes those come in the points of either statues or trees or even just general features in a habitat maybe it's like a unique rock structure but i usually add those first and then kind of build around that uh just to help center the habitat a little bit more and kind of build up those areas of focus that you would have inside those very same habitats now i also add a little bit of enrichment for these guys as well I would like to add a little bit more later down the line once I actually do feel a little bit more confident in making custom enrichment. But for right now, the Wombats just get what they're getting. <laughs> they're, they're getting what they're getting. Um, but besides that, I get started on the actual handrails themselves. And I found it relatively easy to do it this time around since I am working on these relatively right angles, if that makes sense. Um, so I kind of have this going throughout the entire habitat, not the habitat, but the actual walkway itself. Also used lion signs as well. Lion is an incredible Planet Zoo creator. Uh, he is one of the staff members at ZSU. And if you are not sure what ZSU is, I would highly check him check amend check amend what am i saying today i would highly recommend that you guys check out the original hope island zoo series uh because the first few episodes kind of go through the play style of zsu uh and yeah that's really it uh, i have to give a huge shout out to g-rex big shout out to g-rex of billabong zoo for actually allowing me to take on Minibus, who is our resident wombat. Again, ZSU is kind of like franchise mode, I like to say, but so much better because you actually know who you're trading with. You actually know that the animals that you get have stories. You actually know that they have names and so on and so forth. Minibus is a beautiful southern hairy nosed wombat female, and he she wow uh came right from billabong zoo over in australia i am officially the first united states zoo to import southern hairy nosed wombats in zsu and i just find that super fun to begin with um and as of recently i have to say hope harbor zoo is now officially the quote-unquote largest zoo in zsu uh so we now have around i want to say 329 species and that just keeps on growing um a lot of the species i have been getting recently have been super awesome uh you guys could actually go check out my press room on zsu itself uh you can get a link to join zsu in the description right down below super awesome community 
but adding the last final details to this habitat itself a few more trees and then here we are in the cinematics i wanted to thank you guys so much for stopping by uh the support as of late has been super awesome and if you are new here be sure to consider to subscribe it always does help out the channel and i appreciate you guys even sticking through to the end to begin with if you just skipped right over here just to get to the cinematics just know i appreciate you as well all right awesome so that's really it my friends thank you so much for stopping by and i can't wait to see you all in the next episode of hope harbor zoo hope you guys all have a most wonderful wonderful days and i'll see you all then goodbye